Hey guys, welcome back to another mini-sode where today we'll be talking about Spider-Man the Movie. For the most part, the story of Spider-Man follows the 2002 film, from the origin to the battle with the Green Goblin, with your standard extra filler points like throwing in other villains like Shocker and Xbox exclusive Kraven the Hunter, as well as slight plot alterations. The gameplay is a third-person action style, very similar to the previous Spider-Man games on the PlayStation, where you progress through each level, both outside and indoors, beating up thugs and completing additional objectives. You have access to all of Spidey's abilities, wall crawling, web swinging and zipping, punch kick combos, and going stealth. Getting the hang of old webhead may take a little getting used to, but you'll be zipping through the stages in no time. Circus in town? A nice bonus is all the unlockable stuff obtained, whether by collecting golden spiders or cheating. You have your usual concept art, movie viewer, and extra costumes. You also unlock a second campaign where you play as Harry Osborn in the goblin suit. Even though you play through the same levels, the story is slightly altered where Harry is chasing the alternate green goblin. Yeah, not original, but being able to use the goblin's abilities is pretty cool. A side note that's pretty funny is that the game had to be re-released due to a code that let you play as Mary Jane, and when you save her at the end of the game, well, just take a look for yourself. Mary Jane, there's something I have to tell you. I... I know, Tiger. You don't have to say. Oh, Vidya Games. For presentation, Spider-Man does a pretty good job of capturing the look and feel of the film, in most parts. The graphics do an alright justice of capturing the look of New York, if you can win the fight against the camera long enough to admire it, and the character models are decent representations of the film's actors. With audio, the music is a very good score with a combination of orchestra with a slight techno beat in some parts. Regarding voiceover, the cast is alright, with the standouts of Tobey Maguire and William Dafoe reprising their roles of Spider-Man and the Goblin respectively, even if Tobey Maguire sounds a little bored. Tough day at the office, huh? Mine is a killer. <laughs> Put your heart into those screams, my lovely girl, the better to bait my trap! Too late. Don't worry, Mary Jane. I'm coming! So, is Spider-Man the movie collection worthy? Well, that depends. If you enjoy this classic style of Spider-Man's gameplay, then yes it is, as it's an alright licensed platformer, and pretty cheap to pick up. Now, sadly this would be the last Spider-Man to have this style of gameplay, as the next entry would be a little more... open. But I'll save that for another time. And with that, this is the Dolly Popka saying if you want to play retro, try going green. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. That's my life. Complicated. Looks like you're done now. Go outside and play.